Hello, everyone. Welcome to day two of Rail Live. On behalf of Terrapin, Mafix, all of our institutional partners and our sponsors, I hope you enjoyed yesterday and hope you make the most of this morning's panel. I'd like to now introduce the moderator for the session, Pedro Fortea, General Director for Mafix, who will introduce the rest of the panel. Pedro, over to you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first uh, panel of today in Rail Live. If anyone in the audience have any, any questions, please leave it on the chat and I will try to, to include it at the same at the, day, at the end of the debate. So let's start by uh, first by introducing uh, our speakers. Uh, Ramon Maya. Uh, Ramon is the director of Metro Strategic uh, Projects at TMB Metro Barcelona and he's passionate not only about railways but also about mobility and innovation. He led the implementation of the automated line nine in Metro Barcelona and the first uh, automated line in, in Spain. Um, the first time I read about uh, Ramon was uh, back in 2017 when a delegation from expert, uh, experts from uh, Silicon Valley was visiting Spain. So I thought, good, some expert coming from Silicon Valley to Barcelona and not uh, the other way. Uh, thank you, Ramon, for being here today. Yeah, Hendrik, Hend Hendrik Plogman. Uh, Olsen, he is the CEO of Metro Copenhagen and Greater Copenhagen Light Rail. Previously, he served as the Director of Finance Administration at the Municipality of um, Copenhagen. He has been in the public transport uh, business for more than 15 years, and he has a lot of to tell us about the uh, railway, of course, but also about last, first mile, intermodality, etc. Welcome, Henrik. Thank you very much. Pleased to be here. And if Henrik has spent 15 years in the public transport business, our next panelist uh, was another 15 years or more in, in Adiv, the Spanish uh, rail, uh, railway infrastructure um, manager. Last year, she was appointed as CEO of Metro Madrid, the first woman CEO in Metro Madrid in its more than 100 years of history. So if I had to make a list of the three most relevant women in our sector in, in Spain, uh, Silvia would be in that list for sure. Hi, Silvia. Hi, thank you. Vinay Kumar, engineer expert on technology. Vinay Kumar has also more than 20 years of experience in the transportation sector. He worked for the Indian Railways, Metro Delhi, the highest speed corporation, and now he's leading the National Capital Region Transport Corporation with the ambitious project that will provide semi-high speed commuter service to the Delhi Capital Region. Thanks for being here, Vinay. Thanks, pleased to be here. I'm, and have you, I haven't heard about uh, learning from other industries and other sectors. If you want to do that, uh, Andy Lord is, uh, is, uh, is our man. He gained an honors degree in mechanical engineers and developed his career in aviation and uh, aerospace sector in companies like British Airways of Mac or Menzies Aviation. And now he's the uh, managing director of London Underground. Binaya, uh, given that Delhi, the national capital of India, already, already has developed a metro system along with other urban modes of public transport, how important would it be for the new commuter network being developed and named RRTS to be integrated with the um, existing modes? What is your perspective on significance of the regional and urban modes of transport to be connected and the role they play as a whole in shaping the region in the long term? Oh, yeah. Yeah, in fact, uh, you're right, Pedro, uh, Delhi Metro uh, developed this system in last about 20 years in Delhi, and it, it is a huge system now, about 280 kilometers or so, about 280 stations within Delhi city. But unfortunately, uh, if you look at the uh, metropolitan area uh, in and around Delhi, which is uh, almost like 40, 45,000 square kilometers of area, the last census which we, India had, this had a population of about 46 million. But it is expected the next uh, census which will be happening next year, it will be over 60 million people. So uh, there is no commuter network as of today. So this area is served by the buses and buses are state specific. So there are four states around Delhi and they have buses moving from that particular state to Delhi. But if you look at the whole region, this, uh, this particular kind of seamless connectivity is missing. And that is why the government of India and four state governments, they came together and they decided that there should be a seamless connectivity 
throughout this region because transport and environment these two issues are which are which go beyond the political and geographical boundaries so uh, this this is a strategic investment which government is doing and our focus is seriously on integrating various modes of public transport within the region so not only that uh, we are integrating with out of seven out of eight lines seven lines of delhi metro at various stations with the rts system the regional rapid transit system which we are implementing but with the national railway stations at uh, various locations three in delhi few others nearby all the important bus stations like uh, interstate uh, bus terminus and the delhi airport so there will be direct connectivity with delhi airport with this regional rapid transit system having a average speed of 100 km per hour with all stoppages so quite fast ease of movement will be there ease of accessibility will be there see the whole uh, objective is to create a system so that we can move people from private vehicles to uh, public transport and in the process we can decongest the roads and decongest delhi city itself because today everybody comes to delhi for um, economic activity for jobs for services for uh, education for medical needs we we intend to decentralize and we intend to develop polycentric uh, uh, centers different centers around delhi so that uh, economic activity takes place near to the place of residence rather than people have to commute by various means up to 2 hours or 3 hours in the morning and back this system will be able to provide about 1 hour travel time anywhere to anywhere within the whole region now that makes the life much easier than what it is today so uh, what we are doing we are in, uh, introducing a business class also in this metro system so that we can move people from cars to public transport see as of today uh, th- there is lot of congestion on the roads of delhi and there is no no non peak hour it is almost like peak whole of, whole of the day the roads are congested to that extent so this system is going to help not only in providing the mobility needs of today but for future decades maybe 40 50 years from now and this will direct the investment whether it is by the public entities or private individuals in a particular way so that uh, land use and mobility is integrated on long term basis uh, vina I, i watch video Uh, of your company on the web in which uh, it said that cities uh, like Delhi Mumbai or Bangalore are losing uh, close to 22 billion dollars annually to uh, due to congestion problems the, this uh, congestion is growing at a rate of 7% annually how do you think that the railway rapid transit uh, project will help to reduce these figures including the pollution uh, associated to to them we have four minutes please so uh, thank you pedro for raising this particular issue uh, this is very relevant to uh, not only uh, the, the, that defines the main objective of the regional rapid transit system which is being implemented here in delhi and uh, in the complete metropolitan area but uh, this is what drives us on day to day basis the uh, team which, which is implementing this particular uh, uh, project so uh, just to give you a perspective i'll tell you So Delhi has more than 10 million vehicles. So you can imagine that all roads are congested, create a lot of pollution because not only due to the uh, fumes and the pollution which is coming out of the engines of these uh, vehicles, but the, the delay uh, which it takes to uh, move a particular distance within the city. So while uh, Delhi Metro has reduced a uh, number of vehicles on the road to quite some extent. but a lot of population which is coming to delhi daily a recent study has revealed that almost 40 42% of the vehicles which are on the delhi road they come from outside delhi and they come and go back so they remain within the uh, say about 50 km radius of the city for quite some time the average speed of vehicles on delhi road is as low as 20 km per hour or maybe less than that during the uh, morning evening periods 
uh, at that time even on the trunk route it reduces to 10 km per hour now this is a really alarming situation especially during the winter months if you see during the november and december the, the particular uh, time in which we are talking to each other the pollution levels are very very high in delhi and uh, dust on the road and the fumes from the vehicles they contribute significantly in this pollution so uh, what rts is going to do because it is a dedicated corridor and uh, the trains are rectified so not creating any pollution rather they will be replacing large number of vehicles